Hi, so we're going to look at problem 12 for forces and laws of motion. In this example, we have a car where only two forces matter. We're looking at it from the bird's view and we're asked to figure out the net force. So we are only interested in the net forces in the horizontal direction. Vertically, there's force of gravity straight down and then normal force straight up from the road. They will equal each other out and there will be no zero force vertically, no net force vertically. However, horizontally there is net force. Now these two forces are not perpendicular to each other. They're not collinear. Had they been collinear, we would have done maybe if they, so for example, if I have 450 pointing to the right and another 400 pointing to the same right, we would just done 400 plus 450 and be done with it, 850, and we're happy. Had they been collinear but opposite in directions, so for example, if I have 450 to the right and 400 to the left, then we would have subtracted and our net force would have been 50, and I'm not drawing to scale, but it would have been 50 newtons to the right had they been collinear but opposite in direction. In this case, however, our forces are not collinear at all. They are at a at an angle to each other, and that angle is not even 90 degrees. We cannot just go and do Pythagorean theorem straight away. So let me explain. So if I had 400 this way and 450 this way, then we would have done Pythagorean theorem straight away. This would have been the root of 400 squared plus 450 squared, and then we would have done 10, inverse 10 of 4 to 450 to figure out that angle. However, in our case, these forces are at all kinds of, um, all kinds of vectors to each other. So what we're going to do, we're going to employ our old trusted method of breaking forces into components. So I'm going to create a small table right here to write down all the values that we need. And we're going to look at each vector separately. So 450, 450, and then 400. And we're going to look at their x and y components. Now 450, if I look at my x and y, this side is across, so that's sin. This side is close, so that's cosine. So for x component, 450 sine 10. And it's going to be negative, mind you, because it's to the left. So don't forget, if it's left or down, it's going to be negative. So then 450 cos, and it's upward, so it's positive. On the other hand, for 400, here are my x and y components. Again, x is sine, and it's positive because it's pointing to the right. Sorry, 400. So 400 sine of 30, so that's 200. And then 400 cosine of 30 in the y department. Positive again because it's pointing down. I'm going to pause, calculate, and come back. So here I'm back with all the calculations completed. 200, which is half of 400, which is which means that I did 400 times sine of 30, minus 450 sine of 10 gives me 122 newtons. And then vertically, both vectors are added together because they're both upwards, and that amounts to 790 newtons. Now, look over here. So what I did, I recreated the two vectors, the green and the blue, represent the vectors from the original diagram, the vectors of the forces. In order to not redraw anything and create triangles, we can employ a um, parallelogram method of adding vectors. And that means that we use the original vectors the way they are applied from the same point, because when we f uh, show free body diagrams, we draw forces from the same point usually is the center of mass, and those two forces then act as sides of a parallelogram. We complete the parallelogram, and the diagonal 
from the point of contact of those two forces to the opposite point, that diagonal will be our resultant or the addition of the two vectors that we're looking at. And on the right, you can see that I recreated that resultant vector and showed the Rx and Ry. Now, mathematically, Rx and Ry were calculated as 122 newtons and 790 newtons. So seven times more, and visually look at it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Practically seven times as much as the other ones. Um, so that kind of represents what it should look like visually and what it should like uh, mathematically. So we are more concerned with the mathematics. So if mathematics makes sense, that's great. Visually, again, it comes with practice. You can practice drawing those parallelograms and figuring out your resultant force. Um, it should be pretty easy once you've done a few runs. Um, so then, since I know the two perpendicular sides, this is a 90 degree angle, so I have the two legs of my right triangle and my resultant vector as is, which is this guy, will be found as Pythagorean theorem of its x component and y component. So you can write this as your reminder rx and ry squared. And then numerically, from this example, we have 790 squared plus 122 squared. 799, la 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 la, so I'm just going to round it to 700, uh, to actually 800. Yeah, let's make it 800 newtons. So then, we also need to figure out the direction. Direction comes from an angle, so I'm, I have it marked as theta. Angle theta to the horizontal. You will do tangent, inverse, or arctangent of 790 over 122. That is 81 degrees. 81 degrees above the horizontal. Since we are not given north, east, west, south, whatever, we can just mark it as to the horizontal. So 81 degrees is your direction of the vector of the force. Now that answers A. What is the resultant vector of these two forces? We gave magnitude and direction. Magnitude was seven, uh, almost 800 newtons and direction is 81 degrees to the horizontal. Now how do we figure out the acceleration? So if you remember Newton's second law, the way Newton phrased it is Acceleration is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to mass. So our net force, we figured out, was 800 newtons, and there it's telling us that the car's mass is 3,000 kilograms. So it's like 8 over 30. So a little over 0 0.2. 0 0.27 is going to be meters per second squared. So 0.27 meters per second squared, mind you, somebody's pulling that car. It's not like the car is driving. So they're trying to pull that car. Hence, a small acceleration of 0.27 meters per second squared and the direction the same as the force, 81 degrees to the horizontal. That's it for question number 12 where we're given two forces asked to figure out the net force on the car and the acceleration that the car has due to those two forces where every other force can be ignored, friction is negligible, and then gravity and normal force counter counteract each other and give us zero net force. So the only unbalanced forces in this example are 450 newtons and 400 newtons applied at different angles. That's we, that is why we had to split them into two components. So there we go.